Something happened to me in the fall of 1999 that set me on a completely different path. But this one event sparked something in me that radically altered how I would approach playing guitar afterward. A certain documentary was played on TV that included this clip of a guy playing guitar. That player, of course, was Lenny Bro. probably couldn't help but notice that he was using one of these, a thumb pick. Actually, thumb picks weren't completely new to me. When I was 10 or 11, I taught myself this from one of my dad's Chet Atkins records. also ended up playing a little bit of five string banjo later on. Don't laugh. And it's common to use thumb picks combined with finger picks. Notice what I'm doing here? Finger picks. <laughs> I hadn't really used a thumb for, for a thumb pick. I hadn't really used a thumb pick for 12 or 13 years when that documentary came out. So when I tried using one again, I sounded like Mel Bay book one. <laughs> As time went on, I got better and better with the thumb pick. But it was definitely Lenny Bro who flipped my world upside down and made me make the switch over to use a thumb pick exclusively. And it just clinched it. It all made sense. I instantly knew I could do more with a thumb pick. <laughs> Let me show you why I switched to using a thumb pick exclusively and why you may want to consider using one too. I'm also going to show you how I modify my thumb picks so that they're more practical for me than straight out of the box. You can use it like a flat pick. Most people don't realize that if you hold it between your thumb and index fingers, you have an instant flat pick that won't fall on the floor when you release your index finger. Go oh, crap. Admittedly, you probably can't shred using a thumb pick in that way, but I do strum chords or play single string lines once in a while that way. Instead of doing down and up strokes like a flat pick, this is what I mostly do, is I use my thumb and index finger. Sometimes I'll break up the use of my index with a combination of index and middle fingers, depending on if I'm playing the same string or incorporating another string. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Why not use the remaining fingers to do all that while holding a pick? You can use a hybrid technique, which is picking fingers, but now you're missing a finger because one of them is, has to hold the pick. Now you have thumb and four fingers to do all kinds of fun stuff with. <laughs> Plus, you are sacrificing the strongest, most agile finger out of the remaining four. I know there's lots of people who are amazing players that use a hybrid technique. Sure but it takes more effort to use the remaining fingers when the index finger is locked in place. I know this because I played with pick and fingers for many years. Learning to play in that Chet Atkins style from a young age must have programmed my brain in some way. You're essentially doing two things at the same time, playing a melody and accompaniment. So now in a jazz context, you can do this. Here's 
here's my main beef with just about all thumbpicks out there and a few reasons why you might not want to go the route of using a thumbpick yourself. Here's a new one. The curved side is on the wrong side of the pick. It's as if they curved the part that wraps around your thumb the wrong way on a left-handed thumb pick. I want the curve to be on the other side of the pick so that the pick rolls off the string smoothly with no scrape, clicking, or other noises. See, what I want is a fat sound coming from my thumb so that it more matches the tone produced from the fingernails on my other or the fingernails on my same hand. So I play alternating thumb and index. I'm hoping you won't notice a difference in between my upstroke and my downstroke sound wise. And there's also too much material jutting out it's as if they are trying to make this as clumsy as possible because too much of the pick bites in too far into the strings. I really don't know why manufacturers don't consult players as to what shape will actually work. If there's anyone out there that works for a thumb pick manufacturer and you would like to reach out to me, I'd be happy to talk to someone about designing a half decent thumb pick. Follow me over to my workbench and I'll show you what I do to make my thumb picks more usable. Okay, so here's the items that I use. Wire cutters to trim off material on the pick first before I start filing it down. Once I clip it off, then I file it down with a flat file. And then various grits of sandpaper to smooth off the rough edges and to get it uh, as almost as glossy or as glossy as the original pick surface. I start with the old pick first as my base because I want to do make it a little bit longer than this because it has worn down. It's time to make a new pick. Since it has the curve on the wrong side, I'm going to clip it off so that the curve is on the other side. tell my girlfriend <laughs> pieces of plastic going everywhere that's probably a good start so now I'll just keep filing it down it probably could have clipped it a little bit shorter but it's always better to leave more than cutting it too short because you can't add plastic to it. Let's compare. I think that's getting pretty darn close. And I don't know if you can see, but it's all flat where I, what I have to do is put a bevel on it now, make it so it's more playable. I might try taking just a little bit more off. The one thing that I have noticed is that if you take too much off, especially on this side, then sometimes the string will actually catch on the part that wraps around your thumb. And uh, sometimes, well, not sometimes, usually that's undesirable. So. As you can see, I'm starting to get that round curve. Now, I'm going to put that bevel on it. That's what's going to make it sound nice and smooth. And then, in case I do any upstrokes, I'm going to file a little bit off of the opposite side too, on the top. That's looking pretty good. I think what I'll do now is start sanding it. And let's see, I'll start with 
about 120 grit sandpaper and just like having the file on a flat surface I find this helpful because doing it with your hand it might be a little more ununiform and then just a little bit and I try to sand the top a little bit then I move to some 220 grit I don't know if it's hard to see the bevel that I've got on there and I just swirl it around kind of tipping it like this to get different all the different angles of the my bevel the roundness and pick this up do it on the other side I'd say that's starting to come together then I'll move to 320 grit every time you move to a, a finer grit it gets more and more smooth the reason why I do this by hand and not try to use some kind of machine to uh, like a sanding machine to do this is because it probably would make too much dust and unless you're wearing good proper protection you'd probably get some of this plastic dust in your lungs and I don't think that would be necessarily too healthy but there's not really any dust floating in the air so much when you do it by hand like this it's mostly getting trapped in the sandpaper then lastly I'll move to 400 some I have some 800 grit sandpaper that I used to use on my fingernails actually floating around somewhere that sometimes I'll use but I can't, can't seem to find it so we'll have to make do with 400 so I'm starting flat first and then tipping it over a little bit and it feels very smooth to the touch probably 400 grit is all you need that actually feels pretty darn good we have the round edge over here and sometimes I'll I'll sit down and play with it first and then come back and maybe do a little reshaping just in case like I'm thinking maybe this is still pick sticking out a little bit too far so I may file that down and resand it but that's a good start <laughs> Beautiful. Here's another awesome technique that's easier to do with a thumb pick. I created a video that explains the mystery on how Lenny Bro utilized his famous harmonics. I dive in deep on how Lenny did it and walk you through some of the groundbreaking ways he incorporated this technique. It's one of my most watched videos actually. I can't wait to show you how he did it. Click on the video right here. I'll meet you inside and I'll tell you all about it.